This is a dramatic shoot. <laughs> By the way, stay till the end for a nasty surprise. I was once very intimidated by throwing plates. I never really had any luck with them. They either like cracked or warped or both, to be honest. Flatware can be like that. It can be scary and slightly disappointing, but after a little bit of practice with the shape, you will be able to make flatware in your sleep. This plate is my classic dinnerware shape and I don't trim a foot ring into it. It's just a straight sided plate. Proper preparation of your clay is incredibly important for plates. I like to use soft clay because it's way easier to control and you kind of use less strength. I really like using Reclaim because I can control how soft it's going to be rather than getting clay straight out of the bag. You need to make sure it is very well wedged. And avoiding cracking and warping starts right at the beginning. You want to use more clay than you would expect. You aren't gonna go high with this, but you are gonna go very, very wide. And the more clay that you use means that there's less pressure on a very thin base, which helps with cracking. Just wanna draw your attention here that I was one gram off what I was aiming for, which is hot and cool. And then the next one I was actually pretty far away. So, you know, take the wins. For a dinner plate, I usually use a thousand grams of clay, which is a kilogram, and a little bit extra, like a hundred grams or so for the bat. And if you're a beginner and you're not used to using that amount of clay, you can size down and use less clay and kind of go up as you get a little bit more comfortable. Make sure it is very well wedged up. I like to use a spiral wedging technique, but use whatever you want. If you prefer a ram's head method, then go for that. So this one, which I didn't measure that well, definitely needed a proper wedge. And you can see the air bubbles being popped as I go. It's time to start throwing. So I always throw on a bat for plates. It means that you don't destroy it when you <laughs> remove it from the wheel and it will hold its shape properly. And also using a bat means that it avoids warping. So make sure your bat isn't wobbly at all. Throw the little 100 gram piece of clay nice and flat on the wheel head. This is like a little practice for throwing the plate <laughs> and create a spiral pattern with your finger. Doing that little spiral creates some areas for the bat to suction itself to and it will hold nice and tight. Center your bat and you can use the rings on the wheel to help you do that. I've cut this out a little bit because it actually took me quite a while to center it. <laughs> and then I just use my fist to get it stuck down. Place your clay on the bat and get it nice and stuck and then start centering. When you're centering, you want to make sure that you cone up and down a couple of times to really get the clay in the middle. But coning also gives the clay one last wedge, which is pretty valuable, especially if you're using Reclaim like me. Usually for a pot, like a bowl or a cup or whatever, you would center the clay and then you would open it. With plates, we don't really open, at least the way I do it, I don't really open it, but I kind of just gradually flatten the clay, effectively just continually centering it flat. And there are a couple of techniques to do this. I like to kind of use that chop motion and then this kind of turtle movement <laughs> where I press the clay down and out with my fingers. I don't have enough strength in one hand to do this, so I support my fingers on my left hand with my fingers on my right. I'll show you this now. <laughs> it's quite hard to explain it, so this is kind of what I do. I'm pressing down with my left and I'm supporting with my right. And obviously it's not as kind of formal as that. I, I do kind of adjust the placement of my right hand, especially as I get further out. So watch on this next pull. You'll see I've kind of changed it a wee bit. So I'm kind of cupping my other hand, but it's just supporting my fingers. There's another variation as well, using my thumb. This, I would say, is more of a bad habit of mine because I end up getting quite a sore thumb <laughs> after a day of throwing plates. Some people 
use a sponge as well so they'll drag a sponge out from the middle whichever way you decide to do it just ensure that you're not letting a lip form and you're just pressing the clay out into a pad you don't want to let the clay open up and fold over as you're pulling it out as this will form a weak spot and it will encourage cracking your first few times of throwing plates you might want to just check the base i kind of have an understanding of how thick my clay is but when you're beginning you want to check the base thickness with a needle and you want to aim for something very consistent i always go for about a centimeter or so in the very middle and all the way out to the edge after that you can compress those little holes that you've made with a sponge and I also like to use a rib as well. This is a, a very good rib. I don't know what it is actually, maybe it's a mud tools one. It's got a flat edge and a slightly curved edge. So you can give that a go and decide which side you like the best. Either way, you want to make sure that you're compressing. Compressing the clay with flatware is incredibly important because it really helps to avoid any kind of S cracks or honestly any cracking at all. I want this plate to be about 25 centimeters at throwing stage so at this point I'm aiming for about 27 centimeters so I'm measuring it now and then I'm gonna do my little trick here <laughs> I don't know if I've made this up or if everyone does this instead of creating a lip for me to pull up into a wall I do this little trick I flip the lip up. I hold my thumb at around six o'clock and I dig my thumb right in under the clay at the base and I gently just kind of flip it up. And from there, I will compress the rim to get rid of any messy clay buildup. After that, I can use a wooden knife tool or a rib to straighten the edge. Compress the rim one more time. And measure it, so that is 25 centimeters. It's exactly what I'm going for. And about an inch tall, so like two and a half centimeters or so. If I were production throwing, I would set up a throwing gauge now, but I'm not. I'm just making this for the demo, so I'm going to just take that away because it's slightly annoying for the shot. To finish my plate off, I grab a wooden knife tool and I remove any excess clay from the base. To be honest, there's not usually that much for this style of plate because when you flip the lip up, it tends to clean it up pretty well. But I like to make a little chamfer for my chamfer, chamfer for my wire regardless and I always cut my plates off the bat so that when they're dry and they can pop themselves off when they're ready to be trimmed and if you don't wire them off then they will shrink a little bit as they dry and that can put heaps of pressure on the place where the wall and the base meet um, sometimes leading to a little bit of cracking there so make sure your wire is nice and taut and pull it all the way through too much slack in your wire can lead to cutting through the base so make sure your hands are pulling very tightly away from each other and pressing down into the bat and then it's time to let it dry nice and slowly it's still pretty chilly in my studio at this time of year so i am able to keep them uncovered but if it is hot in your studio drape some plastic over to keep it slow click the link at the end of this video for tips on how to trim your plate and that's it thank you very much for watching i hope that you enjoy making plates i hope that this was helpful and i will see you next week for another pottery video Fuck. awesome that was a really nice bowl as well real bummed about that that's so gross. The foot ring <laughs> is completely intact. Iconic. I guess I could just grab the mop. <laughs>